G'day, it's Craig with another ukulele lesson about a bunch of chords that are all closely related. I'm going to look at major chords, major sevenths, sevenths, sixths, and augmented chords. And we're going to look at how the actual positions on the fretboard are related. But first, uh, a quick recap from a previous theory lesson. A major chord takes its notes from the eight notes of the major scale, and the formula is the one, the three, and the five. A sixth chord is the one, the three, the five, and the sixth. A seventh chord is the one, the three, the five, and a flattened seventh. And then a major seventh chord is the one, three, five, and the actual seventh. And then a major chord of one, three, and five can also sometimes have the eight, which is the same note as the root note one, but it's a higher octave. And then fitting in this gap is the augmented chord, uh, which is the root note one, the third, and a sharpened fifth. So in this case, it won't include the fifth like all the others. And you can see the related pattern. The top note of the major chord is the fifth, and if you sharpen it by one semitone each time, you get each one of these four different chords before coming back to the major chord with the high octave. So let's look at the actual shapes of the chords. Here's our fretboard diagram with the open strings, G, C, E, and A. And if we play a C chord, which we know looks like this, then we've changed the top string to a C. So the root note at the bottom of the chord is this C on the open string. The E is the third, and the G is the fifth. So those three open strings make a C major chord. And so this note that we're fretting, that gives us a high C, is the octave, the eighth. If we take this C shape and we want to make it a C major seventh, we're going to want to flatten the eighth to make a major seven note, a B. And that's the shape you'd play. If we take our C and want to make a C seventh, then we'd flatten that note two steps to become a B flat. And if we want to make a C6, we'd flatten it one more step to the open string, the A. So you can see that each of these shapes has the full major chord, the one, three, and five, C, E, and G. And just changing the yellow note gives us all the other chords. Now to make a C, into uh, C augmented, we want to sharpen the fifth. So that's the G note, and we'll make it a G sharp. I'd play this shape by reaching over with my index finger. Now if you're playing bar chords and your major chord is a C-shaped bar chord, you can see this is like a C with your finger acting as a capo. This could be at any fret on the neck. The root note is here, and the eighth note is here. And these two will be the name of the chord. So then to make a major seventh chord, you'd flatten the eighth to a seven. To make a seventh, it would go one fret lower, and to make a sixth, one fret lower, just a single bar. And the augmented chord, you would reach over with your second finger to play it here. So these C-shaped positions are the simplest for all of these chords. So I try to play them whenever I can for a C, a C-sharp, D, E-flat, E, F, F-sharp, and sometimes G using this shape. So now let's look at open G shapes. And we know that this is the main shape, which changes the notes to G, D, G, and B. 
And the root note could be either of these two Gs. They're both the same pitch. The B note is the third, and the D note is the fifth. So to make this a G major seventh, we'll treat one of these Gs like an eighth and flatten it to an F sharp. But we can't easily flatten the open string, so we'll make this one the F sharp for a G major seventh shape. To turn a G into a G7, we go one fret further, making it an F note. And to go from a G to a G6, we flatten it again to the open E. And to turn a G into a G augmented, we'll sharpen the fifth, which is the D note, making it a D sharp. And these open G shapes are also pretty easy to get the hang of. Now if we're looking at bar shapes, a G shape can be played anywhere on the neck and we'd also need to add a finger here if we're going to use the fourth string. So essentially this is really an F shape with a finger capo and the root note is here. To make this shape into a major seventh, we can flatten this root to get the seven, but then we've lost the root note altogether. This is a minor chord shape. So we're gonna to have to change this note on the bottom string right down to here, two frets below the original bar. And then we get the root note again. And I'd play this with my index finger on that lower bar and my third finger barring the other three notes. And you can see it looks like the other open G major 7th diagram above it. To make a 7th chord, we'll go from this G major 7th shape and flatten the 7th. So you can see this looks like our open G7. To make this into a 6th, that 7th shape just gets flattened once more. So it's like the open G6. And for an augmented chord, if we're starting with an f shape bar chord, we'll sharpen this fifth like this. And you'll probably see this shape more often in any chord books, but I don't actually think it's the best choice. It's a little bit awkward. So if you go back to this uh, original bar, fret and slide it up one and then move this note up another three frets with your pinky on the top string you've got a C shape augmented chord just like we used before it's just one fret higher than the F shaped bar and you could also play this same shape three frets lower so the root note is on the bottom string in the same place as the root for the 7th, the 6th, and the major 7th chords. Because uh, augmented chords can be restarted every four frets. Each of the notes changes positions, but it's still just the same chord. But I'd recommend your go-to chord is one fret up from the major bar. All of these bar chords are based on F shape and G shape chords, and they're going to be exactly the same when we look at the next chord, which is the open F. So here's the finger position we know, which changes the notes to A, C, F, and A. The F is the root note, one, and we have two identical A's as the third, and the C is the fifth. And sometimes you can play an F chord with this higher C as well. Whichever note we choose for our top string, we, we will still have an F, an A, and a C on the other strings to make the F major chord. So to turn our open F to an F major 7, we want to flatten an F note to get an E. But now we've lost our root F note altogether. So we'll have to find another one by sliding this note right up to the fifth fret to get F. 
but you can see now there's no C. So we've got two A's. We'll slide this note up to the fifth fret as well, and that will give us our C. And we've got the one, the three, the five, and the seven. To make an F into an F seventh, our uh, flattened seventh note wants to be a D sharp. The closest D sharp is on the C string. So there it is, but we've now lost our C again. So this is where it was good to play the version of F with the top C. But just so you know, it's often okay to cheat an F7 and just play these black positions. It'll sound just like a dominant seventh, even without the C note, the fifth. But the true four note chord needs this top C. If we take this full F7, we know we can get an F6 by flattening that seventh, which gives us a D note. And you'd need to play the top C with your pinky. But this is another chord where the C could be dropped playing another A instead, and it would sound pretty close. You'd actually be playing a D minor, you can see from the black notes. And because D is the relative minor to F, a D minor sounds very close to an F6. It's a lot easier to play and, and it's more versatile. So I tend to use this cheat more than an actual F6 with the top C. And then taking our open F shape, how do we turn that into an F augmented? And we want to sharpen the fifth, which is the note C. And there are two of those. So they become... C sharp. And I would play this shape as a bar chord. And you can see it's exactly the same as our previous C shaped augmented chords. And as I pointed out before, the major F shape bar chord becomes a major seventh by dropping down two frets and making this shape like an open G major seventh. And we also make our seventh chord the same way, like an open G7, and same with the sixth. They're all like the open G shapes, two frets down from the major F shape. And the augmented shape is like the C shape augmented, one fret up. Or you could play it three frets down. And lastly, I want to look at the open A shape. So this is the finger position, giving us the notes A, C sharp, E, and another identical A. The A is the root, the C sharp is the third, and the E is the fifth. So to make an A major seventh, we want to flatten one A, and it'll have to be this one on the fourth string, making a G sharp with the other notes making A major. We already know how to make an A into an A seventh, and that's to go one further to the open G string. Now it's a bit trickier to make an A six. Uh, we want to flatten the G note to become an F sharp somehow. The closest F sharp is on the E string up here. But now we've lost the E. And again, this is where I usually cheat. Uh, those black dots are an F sharp minor shape. And that's actually close enough to a, an A6 to work almost every time. But if we want to keep the E, then this note can slide right up to the sixth fret to get F sharp. And then we're going to need a C sharp, so this note can slide up to meet it. And now we've got A, C sharp, E, and the F sharp. That's a proper A6. And to get an open A to become an A augmented, we just have to sharpen the fifth, which is the E. So this becomes an F. And once again, you could also bar this and play a C sharp with your pinky, and it's a C shape bar, augmented chord. 
but the open augmented here is quite simple. Now the major bar chords that are A-shaped, like B flat, B, C, D flat, D, E flat, you can play all those. The root notes are on the two outside strings. To get a major seventh, we can choose one of them to flatten. And flattening the top string gives us this shape, everything in a diagonal line. But I prefer to flatten the other root note, making this shape, and I can keep the bar in place. Then to make it a seventh from the A shape, that bottom note goes one step further to make a pretty easy shape. The sixth, though, is again a bit tricky. If we're flattening the same note, it's no longer a bar chord and it's a bit awkward to finger. So we could start with our major, noting that the root note is two frets above the bar, and bring the bar up to meet that root and then place these two notes past that, so it's like an open G6 with the sixth note here. The augmented chord coming from an A-shaped bar, you slide the bar up one, and then put your pinky finger three frets above that. So it's exactly the same shape again as all augmented chords and the sharpened fifth would be here. And just before I finish, I want to recap the augmented bar chords. If you've got an A-shaped bar, the augmented position is to take that bar up one fret and make a C-shaped augmented position. And the roots will match on the bottom string. If it's an F-shaped chord, the augmented is exactly the same. You slide up and play a C-shaped augmented chord. And the roots here will match on the second string and the thirds will match on the bottom. And if it's a C-shaped chord, the augmented chord doesn't move position. You just add the bottom note. And the roots are on the top string. And Every augmented chord can be exactly the same shape, which is actually quite easy. So I hope this has helped to make some sense of a lot of chord positions, which are all closely related, often just by moving that one note, or sometimes swapping one out and finding a replacement on another string. And if you ever get stuck wondering what a particular chord is, you can probably work it out from the chord shapes that you already do know, just making those changes to a single note. Okay, thank you. Please subscribe if you like my tutorials, and uh, I'll have another one up soon exploring a different set of uh, re related chords. Bye for now.